Hey, what's up guys? It's Covert Code here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to make your game popular on Roblox. So the first concept that you really need to understand is that your game has to have a good gameplay loop. Your game can't have a bad gameplay loop and expect players to enjoy your game and make it popular. And if you don't know what a gameplay loop is, it is essentially a sort of set of repetitive actions which your players do um, in your game, right? And they do this in a loop uh, format. Now, I'm going to be bringing something up on the screen now, but essentially, let's think of a simulator game on Roblox, right? So you attack an enemy, you get coins, you buy new gear, and you can kill better enemies. That's the gameplay loop for this simulator game. If you have a game with without a gameplay loop, for example, right? Um, what's the reason uh, a player is gonna stay there and play your game? There's no reason to do that, right? So just make sure you have a good gameplay loop and this sort of ties in to the next point and that's retention. So retention is essentially um, keeping players um, in your game and keeping them coming back. Because you can have the best game in the world, right? If no one keeps coming back to play it, you're only gonna get one-time players, right? And that might take your game to maybe, you know, maybe a thousand or a couple thousand players, which is pretty good, right? But then they will all leave and your player count will drop. So making sure that your game's retention is good is essential. And you can do this by introducing things such as daily rewards, right? So when you have daily rewards in a game, um, that essentially makes players or entices them to join your game again and just that makes your uh, player count just stay high consistently now if you want your game to blow up right um there are two methods there's a free method and there's a paid method and for the paid method you need robux and I'm not saying you can use one without using the other, ideally use them both. But the free method is essentially contacting YouTubers to promote your game. You can literally just find their email by going to the about section of a YouTuber's page and viewing their email and sending them an email saying, hey, um, could you please play my game? I made this, there's this, this and that in my game. Um, here's a free code for your subscribers. And that way you're enticing popular YouTubers to play your game. And if one of them does make a video on your game, there's going to be a ton of players um, from the video. It's just going to be a huge influx of players from the video that this popular YouTuber makes. And this is good, but make sure you have great retention because then you can keep those players coming back. Because if you don't have good retention, then they'll just join one time and they'll never be back again. The paid method of making your game popular is... Then again, it's split up into two different sections, okay? So there's advertising and then there's sponsoring. And if you've ever just been on the Roblox website, you've probably seen ads, unless you have ad blocker, but you've probably seen ads on the side of your web page. Maybe you're browsing, um, you know, your homepage or something like that. And there's ads on the top of your page and to the uh, right or left of your page. And these ads usually promote either groups or games, right? And if you click on one of these ads, it'll take you to the group or game that the ad is promoting. Someone actually paid Robux for that ad to show up on your homepage or whatever page you're on. And there are three types of ads which you can create, right? So there's banner ads, skyscraper ads, and rectangle ads. And I strongly suggest using banner and skyscraper ads for the best results. And that's really because um, the skyscraper ads and the banner ads show up in more places than the rectangle ads. And obviously you want maximum exposure to promote your game, so just go with those two options in my opinion. And the way this works is essentially you put in a, an amount of Robux, let's say 10,000 Robux for example, and you run an ad, okay? Um, so you pick one of these three types of ads, you create that ad in Photoshop or Paint.net or something like that, and you upload it to Roblox, and then you run the ad by clicking, um, you know, the run button, obviously. And to make the ad run, you need to use Robux, as I said before, right? And this ad actually runs for 24 hours. So after the 24 hours end, you need to put in more Robux to make the ad run for another 24 hours. 
The next paid method is using sponsors. So sponsors are kind of similar to ads. You need to pay Robux to make them run for a certain amount of time. Um, however, they are slightly different. I strongly suggest you use sponsors um, over ads if you have really good icons okay for your game and i'm not saying you shouldn't use ads and sponsors combined right you definitely should if you have the budget but if you had to choose between ads and sponsors and you have a really good icon for your game something nice and vibrant which attracts attention um i would definitely suggest going with sponsors over ads now the way sponsors work is you pay a certain amount of money and you make your game's icon, okay, show up next to other games on the Discover page. And your game icon has that sort of sponsored gray tag, which I'll show on the screen now. Um, but essentially, the more Robux you pay, the higher you rank on the Discover page. So if you pay enough money, you can show up on the front page. Now, these work slightly different from ads, as I already mentioned. So... You can actually target who you want your game um, to be shown to, right? So if you want um, your game to be shown to males or females, you can actually choose that. If you don't care, you can choose any. Um, if your game is specifically targeted towards, um, uh, you know, people aged under 13, you can actually do that. And if your game doesn't work on console or if your game doesn't work on your uh, phone devices or anything like that, um, you can actually make it only appear to those on a PC. So that's pretty handy. Um, so the next thing is actually choosing how long you want your sponsors to run for, right? So um, in contrast to ads you can actually pick um how long you want your sponsors to run for right so ads only run for 24 hours and with sponsors you can choose however many days you want them to run for right so at the moment the maximum is 28 days so you can have your sponsors run for 28 days in a row if you want and another uh difference from ads is for ads you pay a certain amount of robux to make the ad run for 24 hours but with sponsors you can pay per day so if i want to spend 5000 robux every single day for 28 days i can do that um obviously you will get less impressions which i'll get to what those are in a second um you know because the the amount of impressions will be split up into 28 different days um but if you have the budget to do this, I would suggest doing this. And what I meant by impressions was how many people actually see your sponsor or ad, right? So if you get 1 million impressions, that means 1 million people had your ad or sponsor show up on their page. So those are the two paid methods to make your game blow up on Roblox. Um, and you might be asking, is there a better method or is there a, uh, a superior method um, among these three um, and I would say no it it really comes down to what your game is obviously and if you're not exactly sure how or what you need to use to promote your game I would suggest doing all of these three methods combined so you would contact youtubers for promotion so you get that free exposure and you would also use ads and sponsors to get more exposure for your game and you might also be asking, how much Robux should I spend on sponsors or ads? And the truth is, you can really get away with any amount of Robux, or mostly any amount of Robux that you can think of, right? So, um, if you have a big budget, that's always better. You're going to get more impressions, and therefore, you know, more people will play your game. That's good. But if you don't have as much Robux, you can always use um, ads or sponsors uh, with a small budget. Uh, the only downside to doing this would obviously be that your ads or sponsors will be shown to less people. But if you have at least maybe 500 Robux to put into advertising or sponsoring uh, and you have a good game, right, um, then I would do it. Why not? Um, you don't need millions of Robux to you know, promote your game. And the trick here, guys, is not to spend your Robux. So you might be tempted, hey, I made my first thousand Robux from my game. I'm going to go buy a brand new hat or game passes or something like that. I wouldn't do that if I were you, right? So I would actually um, get the amount of Robux that I got from the game and put that back into advertising or sponsors. Up to you. 
So if I put in 1000 Robux into, uh, let's say advertising, and I made 2000 Robux from my game, I would then invest 2000 Robux into advertising to double how much I earn or more realistically, double how much uh, people actually see or hear about my game. And that way you can keep repeating and growing your game. Um, hopefully, you know, you earn the money back. It's always a risk when you promote or, you know, uh, market your game. That's why you need to make sure that you have a good gameplay loop, good retention, and, uh, and more importantly, good monetization if you want to make your money back. So that's all I had, guys, for this video. I hope you found some value in what I just talked about. Um, if you guys have any suggestions about what I should make in the future, um, please leave a comment in the comment section down below suggesting what video you want me to make next, and I'll see you guys next time.